Hi, this is Paul with a tutorial on Octane Render for Rhino. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover the uh, new node graph material. So uh, I've got a fairly simple scene here. Um, there's an ulterior motive for this tutorial, and that is to cover the gradient node. Um, but we'll start off with uh, opening this scene here. And you can see uh, this particular scene I'm is, is a bunch of uh, spheres and these spheres have the random color texture. So I'll show you that material. So you see the uh, each of these spheres is a block instance and the block instance has a definition has the octane material one and it is using the random color texture here. If we change the seed for example um, it'll it'll change the colors you can see them running through there. So if we uh, if we want to uh, get more control over uh, the uh, random color texture, there's a new option in the latest version of the plugin where if you select the actual material, you can change the material type to a node graph. And when you do that, it transfers the material out of the tree above and and uh, encapsulates it in the Octane standalone node graph. So if we tick that, you'll see that uh, it has now converted that material and we can click to edit. So when we click to edit, the uh, node graph comes up. So um, if we change this to a uh, checks material, for example, well, that's a bad example, but there's the checks material there. Um, so we, we can edit the material in this node graph and uh, the changes get propagated through to the viewport. So if we change the color, So you can see I've actually got this material not set up onto the, I'll put it onto the sphere. So uh, if we go back and edit that material, so now we've got it on the sphere as well as the uh, plane. So if we want to have um, for example, discrete colors on each of these objects in the scene. Normally you would use a random color texture, which is here. So if we plug that into the diffuse channel, you'll see that we get a, a bunch of random colors there. So we, we pr in order to get colors, you need to add a gradient. Is here. So on the gradient, you might choose uh, red, for example, and it will give you variations from black to red as the random color. So we can set this gradient up to only have, say, three different colors, and each of the spheres will have one of those three colors. So to do that we create a bunch of inputs into the gradient and we put so that's position two and we put two of them on top of each other like that and then we can create some RGB colors I'll create a, three of them and I'll set a different color up in each. And then we add those into the into the gradient. So the start color, so this orange here we will have as the start value and value one. So you can see that's created a block color effect and then we'll put the green as the value 2 
and value 3. So now that's created a block of green and we'll put the blue there. So you can see that it's actually created so as long as these things are on top of each other um, it has created three color bands so then the random colors will be one of those three colors. So if we want to change the orange color you can see whatever we change it to will only change those those spheres. So we'll leave it back at orange and if you want to change the distribution of which color is assigned to which you can change the random color seed. So that's pretty cool. So then when you save that scene if you go and save that scene, when you next load that scene this octane material here will just appear without its tree, it'll just have a node graph type and you can go and click to edit the node graph and it will bring that graph up again. You can also do some kind of cool things here, you can select everything, control C it to copy it and paste it into octane standalone and you can actually do the reverse, you can paste from octane standalone back into this node graph. You just need to make sure that the node graph has a material out here because that's what the plugin used to connect into the mesh. So that's in a nutshell, I hope that's been useful, thanks for listening.